Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. What we're doing today is we're gonna remove and reinstall the rear wheel on our Honda CL slash CB350. This is pretty much the same procedure for any drum brake slash chain drive motorcycle that you encounter. It's pretty standard right across the board. Shaft drives are a little different. If you got a disc, it's pretty much the same procedure other than the fact you have to take the brake caliper off. But this in this video, we're gonna specifically focus on the drum brake. Um, or the drum brake wheel, rear wheel removal. You know what I mean. Um, just to give you a little backstory, this is the bike I did, the budget scrambler I did on the Skidmark 300. Uh, when I acquired this bike, uh, the rear spokes were so rusty, they were flaky. So I acquired, I did the ride on it, because, you know, we wanted to see what would happen. But now the ride has came and went. I'm going to swap out the rear wheel. I got another used one with good spokes. It's nice and straight because frankly, there's fun, sketchy, and then there's pushing the envelope of dangerous. And this was pushing the envelope of dangerous. So it didn't die. So we're not gonna push the envelope any further. Anyways, let's get right to how we take the rear wheel off. A lot of crud on this thing. So we're gonna use some uh, blaster spray. Now, I'm not saying you're going to have to do this, but this thing's got a lot of rust, and it's got a lot of dirt on top of the rust. So we're going to spray down all our fasteners before we jump into this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to unhook the rear brake drum. This will take a 14 millimeter deep well socket. You can just lefty loosey this sucker all the way off of here. The smart thing to do would have been to measure the distance from here to the end of the spring and then set it back to that to get a close measurement. Take your little specialty nut, set it off to the side, and let your rod set down there. Now to remove the brake strut. There should be a cotter pin in this. Who knows where this one went, but you're going to take a 12 millimeter socket and lefty loosey that off of there. This bolt has a head that fits into the back of this strut, so we don't have to put a wrench on there. We can just undo the nut, take the washer and rubber washer off of there, and we can pull the strut off. Next time we go to the hardware store, we'll buy a cutter pin for that. Next, we're gonna loosen the chain adjusters. This one's already loose. And stripped out. So if this was tight, we'd take a 10 millimeter wrench and we'd back the nut off of here. And once the nut's backed off, we can then back the adjuster way off. This will allow us room to move the rear wheel forward once the axle's loose. Now we're gonna do a uh, wheel adjuster on the other side. Now, we'll take our 10 millimeter wrench, loosen up our lock nut. Once that is loose, we then take a 10 millimeter socket or wrench and back this off. Surprise, surprise, this one's damaged. The bolt's bent. Uh, we should be able to get a bolt for this. Um, in our local auto parts store. And for the adjuster on the other side, we'll just go on eBay and find another one. Now from here, you have these things called cotter pins. And these should be bent over, hopefully in a nicer fashion than this. This one took some abuse on the trail. Should be able to straighten that thing out, take some pliers, pull it on out through there that was installed properly, then I had to put the chain back on the trail. From there, on this bike, it's a 7 8 wrench, or whatever that metric equivalent is. Ooh. Loosen that sucker up. All right, once it's loose, you should be able to move the wheel in forward. That allows you to get slack on the chain, so you can take the chain off of there. 
and it'll make it easier to take the rear axle out. Tip. You don't want to hit the end of this bolt, or the end of the rear axle, with a hard face hammer, because you'll mushroom the end of it over there, then you'll either never get the nut off, or you won't get the nut back on. So what we're going to do is we're going to thread the nut out till it's flush there. Then we're going to take a soft face hammer, which is going to be rubber, nylon, plastic, some form of a soft face mallet. And we're going to put it up here and then we'll hit that. We'll still have to eventually take the nut off, but this will break the axle free from any dried up grease that's in there and make the rest of the removal process easier. All right, so my soft face hammer is missing in action. So let's say you don't have one. I'm all about improvising. We're gonna take a little piece of wood. We're gonna put it up here. Now that the axle has moved a little bit, it will come out of there easier. Also, if you had to hold the axle in place, on this bike, there's a hole on the other side and you can put like a round shank screwdriver through there or like an Allen wrench. You can put that through there and hold the axle in place while you break the nut free. Luckily I didn't have to do that. So, when we take this apart, we're going to be very careful to keep track of the order. Because it's going to be a nut, a washer, axle adjuster, spacer, spacer on the other side, axle adjuster. It's all got to go back in the same order it came off. Doesn't even hurt to take a lot of pictures of this. Take the washer off. Now, we're going to put this through the hole in the axle on the other side and walk it off of there. Pull the axle adjuster off. Pull the chain off. You're going to get greasy doing this. Pull the spacer out of there. Again, keep all that in order. Then from here, you're going to want to lift this up a little bit with your left hand or have a friend help you. Grab the axle with the right hand, pull it all the way out of there. What's going to happen is the spacer is going to fall, your axle adjuster is going to fall, and obviously your axle is going to come out. You're going to want to put all these back in order. Axle adjuster. Spacer. Other axle adjuster. Oh, no, sorry. Other spacer. Other axle adjuster, washer, nut. There. Now it's all in order for when you have to go put it back on there. Also, I'm going to take some time and clean all the, clean these parts up too. Because everything takes up space and clean dirt and grease. We want the grease on there, but we want fresh, clean, new grease on there. But anyways, move your stuff out of the way. Move your tools out of the way. Roll your rear wheel back, take your brake drum out, set that to the side. You also want to keep any grease and dirt off of there because that's your braking surface. Then from there, you can roll it backwards. You might have to pitch it to the side a little bit to get the tire to clear the fender. But it should come right out of there. It's that simple. Now for rear wheel reinstallation. So we have our axle adjusters here. Um, these technically just slide on and off the swing arm like so. But uh, before I put them on, I like to squeeze them in just a wee little bit. Now I can slide them in place there and they stay there. This is not necessary, but it is a nice little bonus. If you can do it, hey, cool. And next, we're going to get our rear wheel, uh, hopefully up in place. Then you can take your brake drum, make sure it's clean of grease and everything. Reinstall that into place. Now would have been an excellent time to clean this off, which I didn't do. Then we're going to roll this up into place here. Now we still have our two spacers. Hopefully they're still in order. And we have our axle. Before we put our axle back in, we're going to take a little film of grease here. This is just general all-purpose grease. 
And we're gonna smear it all over the uh, all over the axle. Probably looks a little lewd. Enjoy it. Then, gonna hold our spacer in place. Reinstall the axle a little bit. Now comes the challenging part. Some people like to have a friend around for this. We lift up the rear wheel, slide it through a spacer, slide it through the brake drum, then slide it through the wheel bearing. Give it a couple twists, a couple jiggles, and it should slide through there like so. Then from there, you can have your other spacer ready. Make sure your adjuster's in place. Put your spacer in place on this bike. That means it goes back actually into the wheel hub there a little bit. And then try to figure out what's holding you in up. Slide it up like so. Oops. This is a good time to have a soft face hammer on hand. That way you can push the axle through if need be. I did it by hand and I encourage you to be extra careful when doing this. If you start hitting the other side, and it binds up here, it's going to damage your threads. If that damages your threads, you're not gonna be able to get the axle nut on and you're gonna open up a whole can of worms uh, right there. Then after you do that, you can realize you forgot to put the chain on. So, therefore, we are now going to pull the axle back out of there, put thick spacer out, put the chain around the sprocket, put it all back together. Next, you can slide your washer on there and slide your castle nut on. You can run this in until it's snug and then back it off a wee little bit. I'll tighten it up yet because we have to align the chain and set the chain tension. But at that point, everything is reinstalled. Give it a good visual. Make sure your spacers are on the appropriate side. Make sure you didn't forget to put an axle adjuster in there. Just give it all a good once over before you start going any further. Now comes a multi-part process. We have to align the chain and tension the chain at the same time. Obviously right here, there is entirely too much slack in that chain. So you wanna tighten this up right here. That's tensioning the chain. Now it's designed that the chain slack should be 2% of the center to center distance on the sprockets. You can do the math and figure that out if you want. What you're really after is you want to have this thing far enough back that this isn't flapping in the breeze. That would be a little tight right, or a little loose right there. You don't want this thing flapping in the breeze and slapping into everything when you're riding down the road. But also, if it's super crazy tight, which I can only get it so tight here, which sounds like a good idea. However, the problem is, you have to remember, each one of these little links is basically like a little pin in a socket joint. You kind of think of it as an exaggerated manner, would be like this screwdriver through this washer here. So if you have proper chain tension, the pin is through the center of the ring there and it's floating on a film of grease. If you pull it too tight, this pin is gonna to go to the side, it's gonna push all the grease out of the way, and it's going to cause this to prematurely wear out. Nobody wants that. Chain tension explained. So what is happening is when you're trying to set your chain tension, the, the tension you're setting is really from the rear sprocket here to the front sprocket here that's underneath this cover. Obviously, the further back it is, the tighter the chain is. You move your wheel forward, chain goes slack. The technical definition of this or the technical spec is the chain slack should be 2% of the center to center distance 
from the front sprocket to the rear sprocket. In theory, that is correct. However, your swing arm pivots here. That means as your swing arm pivots, when it pivots down, essentially your chain is going to get looser. And when it pivots way up, your chain is going to get looser. That's because the distance from here to here is getting shorter because it's pivoting here. So that's where you want to set it. Because if you set it up to where even at ride height, your rear swing arm is sitting on a downward angle like this, then when you hit bumps on your suspension compresses, the rear suspension is going to go up and it will over tension your chain. Now this thing's set up on the stand. I'm doing this by myself. How am I going to set that up, you ask? I'm going to take a rear ratchet. I'm going to take a ratchet strap and hook it around here and hook it up the grab handle and pull it until everything's in line. Once everything's in line or eyeballed really close to be in line, then I can set my chain tension. Hopefully you can see this. Where the wheel sits at right now, the chain is fairly well aligned. When your chain is extremely misaligned, it's going to look something like that. If you look up the chain, if you put your eye to it back here and you actually look up the chain, you should be able to see it pivots or there's a curve right around here. Then it gets straight and it goes all the way up to the front sprocket. Now you can't really see this front sprocket and that's okay. If you can straighten out this pivot right here or this angle right here, that means the front one will straighten out too because they're gonna move at the same angle. Think about that from geometry class. Not really a better way to explain that. But there is way too far to the left. There is way too far to the right. Hopefully you can still see, especially if I pick it up a little bit, hopefully you can see how it pitches to the right. So what we're going to do to align this thing is we're going to first set our alignment. We're going to crank our axle adjusters in there until it's aligned, and then we'll set our tension. Because you want to set your alignment first, because as you adjust your alignment, that can affect the actual chain tension. So right here you can see it's pretty close. There's not really much of a bend right here. It's a pretty much straight shot. So with that in mind, we're sitting pretty good right there. So we'll move back to an outer shot and uh, I'll show you how to actually make the different adjustments. But what I will be looking at the entire time is looking up this chain to see if I have that pivot here, you know, that angle here, or if it, the top of the chain looks like a straight shot going all the way forward. So now what we're going to do is we're going to loosen our jam nuts here on this bike. It takes a 10 millimeter wrench. Make sure your axle is loose. Now, a lot of people are going to bring up that right here, there are little hash marks here on the swing arm. You can't really see them because of the amount of dirt and rust on this bike. And you can use those and count, oh, hey, this side's three hash marks in and the other side's three hash marks in. I had a Suzuki Bandit, a 96 Suzuki Bandit. Those were wrong. So you can use them. I don't recommend it. So what we did, we'll loosen up this jam down this side, loosen it way up, loosen it way up on the other side. Now we're going to crank these screws in until they make contact. And we're going to start with some slack there on the chain. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a flashlight and from my angle here, my vantage point, I'm going to take that and I'll ratchet. And I'm going to start cranking the right one in first. And as I do that, I can look up this thing. Whoops, moved it too far. I can look up this thing and see the alignment of the chain. Now you can see as I'm doing that, it's lifting up the chain right here. So it's setting our chain tension. So I'm gonna crank a little on the other side, all while looking up the chain. And right around there, a little bit more, right around there, I got really good chain alignment. 
And with a flashlight in my eyeball, I can actually see all the way to the front sprocket. So I can see down the top of this chain and see it's all nicely in line. There's no weird pitches in it halfway. However, I still have way too much slop right here. Also, I do technically need to compress the suspension a little bit. Okay, so I have a ratchet strap on the other side, and it's compressing the rear suspension enough that everything is pretty much in line. Like I said, everything would be the rear axle, swing arm pivot bolt, and the front sprocket, counter shaft sprocket, whatever. Anyways, it's all up there, and the bike is essentially sitting at ride height. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I usually don't go this far. I usually just set it a wee little bit slack and then ride the snot out of the thing. But this is the internet, and somebody's going to be like, Dude, you didn't set your suspension right. <laughs> so, you know, feel free to argue with those guys in the comments. The big thing you're really after, remember, is you just want to take the slack out of this. But like I demonstrated, you just want it to be floating on that film of grease in there. You don't want it over here. So you don't want this sucker guitar string tight. So we're actually only going to go a little bit tighter than that right there. Now to help maintain our alignment, if you prefer, we can actually use a wrench, and we will do it evenly. Start with the wrench at 6 o'clock, going to go 12 o'clock. So one half turn here, one half turn on the other side. Now we'll check our tension. That's actually sitting pretty solid there. That's pretty good. We got a wee little bit of sag there. A lot of people call that about eh, five eighths of an inch, maybe half an inch or so. Uh, and that's also set at ride height. So from there, we can torque down our rear axle and put our cotter pin in. And then we'll lock these jam nuts. We'll crank them in here and we'll lock them in place to hold the axle adjusters in place. Take our metric seven eighths wrench. So now take a rear drum here. Slide that back there. Now remember, there's a little T-bolt on the back. Throw it on the floor. Pick up the T-bolt, you just threw it on the floor. Remember, there's a little rectangle-ish looking head here. There's a little flat on the back side of this. That little rectangle, the long part of the rectangle-ish looking head needs to go up against that flat. That's what holds it in place. If this isn't sticking out far enough, you probably don't have that aligned properly. So, there might be a rubber washer that goes in here. It'd be great if there was. Here's your rubber rear washer there. Slide that into place. And we're going to slide our strut on there. Make sure the shouldered part of the bolt fits through the strut. Take your washer, thread that on there, then take the nut that came off of there. Thread that on there. Snug this up. And torque this to spec. Now, torque up your rear brake linkage. Oh, there is a little cotter pin in here, but I, I have to go get a new one. I don't have one. So, Make sure you put that little counter pin in there. So now we have this fine threaded shaft here. Doo -doo, and they have the spring that goes on in front of it. And that will go through this hole in the brake drum linkage arm. So push it through. And you have this specialty nut that's got this notch on it. Make sure all the crud's out of there. Thread this up on here. I don't know why I'm having a hard time. There we go. Thread this a ways up on in there. And I'm pushing the brake linkage forward just so I can easily crank this nut all the way up on here. Now that little U will sit around this little barrel in here and it will stay locked in place. You can take your 14 millimeter deep well Crank it in there and tighten it up. Now you don't go until this stops. This is your rear brakes. So find a spot where you're setting it, where the notch is sitting in there properly. Press your rear brake lever. That's still more throw than I would like. Yeah. 
yeah, that's pretty good. On some bikes, there's a little indicator right up on here. It has like a little window in your brake drum that tells you what's good. They didn't do that in 1970 on these things. Rear axle torque is 58 to, sorry, 50 to 68 foot pounds. It's kind of a wide range, don't you think? So I split the difference. I got the torque wrench set at about 62. So we're just going to. Actually, right about there. So we are good to go. And from there, you can take your cotter pin. You should probably use a new cotter pin. Bend it around there. Idea is, keeps the axle nut from backing back off of there. From there, you're essentially ready to go ride. 